Howdy folks, Kevin here. Today I want to show you a tool I've been working on for WebDriver IO. It allows you to run WebDriver IO tests from a user interface or like a desktop tool. I've done a video on this in the past and except I've done a few updates since then that has kind of changed how the layout is and I wanted to cover it again. So let's go ahead and open up the tool. I should note I'm recording this while I'm out of town, so my audio is not going to be fantastic. Apologies for that ahead of time, but I did want to get this recording in despite the lack of equipment. Okay, so I have the tool open. I've called it Chester Desktop. I have this strange idea of starting a tool called Chester for the internet that helps run tests on the internet, but uh, for now I'm just building out a desktop version of it, kind of. Um, and this is what my code name is for it, I guess. But you see, I've got many projects already added. We'll go through adding a project in just a moment, but I'm going to jump over to the basic project. And that's going to load up. I'm going to open up my configuration file. You can see I can double click on any of these files. Like in my error shots, I can double click on that, and it will actually open up that error shot. Just a little file browser to make it a little bit easier for you to navigate around, especially if you want to get into your tests. One thing I'd love to do is add like a test browser here that will actually go through each of your test names, like it should load, and show them up here. That'd be really cool. But anyway, just a quick overview. You can select from config files if you have multiple config files. If you'd like to add another config file, click there and it'll manually add it. Um, it'll automatically find this configuration file for you based off of your root folder. We'll talk about that in a minute. You can also change the test command and the environment variables. If we want to add some, we'll do that in a minute. I can come in and change my spec files if I have multiples of those, or if I have multiple capabilities, I can enable and disable them. These are all on kind of a per run basis. Same thing with the base URL or my log level. Um, the way I'd normally use it is I'll maybe change some environment variables. I'll probably change the spec files if I have multiple spec files. I usually leave capabilities alone because I don't do too many tests outside of um, Chrome. Base URL is the same. I'll leave that alone. But I do like to change the log level on a pretty regular basis depending on what I need to debug or anything. So I'm going to go into my project settings and I'm going to delete this project to show you what it's like to add a new project. Now here's another thing I want to get better at is this kind of assumes that you already have a project built out. But I think it'd be really cool if you could kind of go through the WebDriver IO configuration tool in here so that if you're unfamiliar with how to do WebDriver IO or how to set up a project, this would kind of set it up for you. But I'm just going to call this one basic project. I'm basically going to set that project up that I had just a second ago. I'll go into my directory that has my configuration file in it. And then my test command, this will be the default command. I could actually do npx uh, wdio, or if I had a uh, package JSON file and I had some special commands uh, inside of npm test, I could do that. So actually, if I go to my package JSON, you can see my test script is right here. Let's increase that text, make it a little bit easier to see. So this is going to run npm test with wdio. If you had anything like a pre-compile step, say you were using TypeScript, you could do something like that if you wanted to, but ours is pretty basic, so we'll leave it as that. Okay, if I jump into this API test, you see I have a browser debug statement. Now, when you run this test, it will stop at that point, and you can input commands down here in the terminal, but before we do that, I'm going to jump into my configuration file, and I have a timeout set to 30 seconds. That might not be enough, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, if I pass in an environment variable called debug, and if I set that to equal true, then I want my timeout to be some really high number. Otherwise, I'll set it back to that 30 seconds. So now, if I pass in an environment variable, debug equals true, it'll use the full long timeout. Otherwise, it'll use 30 seconds. If I jump back into my Chester desktop, I can add a new environment variable. I'll call it debug and I'll set the value to true. Now when I run my test, it's going to stop at that debug statement. You can see now it's stopped. I can call any commands I want, and it returns the command, and it will allow you to sit here for as long as you want because that timeout is so high. 
I can actually toggle that environment variable on and off if I wanted to. We'll take a look at that in just a minute. And I can come in and I can exit. One new thing is I didn't have before, but now you can actually copy and paste to and from this in this terminal. That was not there before and it was really a pain in the butt, but thankfully I've done and fixed it. Let's go ahead and try going over to a new one called Sauce Labs. And this is one that will uh, probably be interesting to you. Um, I had already set this debug equals to true, so that actually stored the value from before. You see my test command is, is different from my other one. I'm going to jump into my configuration file on here. And what's important on this one is at the bottom, it checks to see if you have an environment variable called useSauce equal to true, it'll set your sauce username and your sauce access key. So I'll jump back over to my Chester desktop and I'll say useSauce is equal to true. And then I also need to set my username and my access key. And this would be something and this would be a secret. I did add a description here in case you want to store some note, figured why not. Now I actually don't have these in here, so if I unclick use sauce and then I run these tests, and let's see, I just have the one test. Um, I have silent logging, so I could actually change that to data and hit run test. I can also expand this terminal in and out. Oh, it looks like I don't have uh, some framework install. Give me just a moment. Okay, I had a few things messed up, so I finally figured it out. I'm going to clear the logs. That's going to get rid of all the thing in there. And then I can click Run Test, or I can hit Control R. I find the hotkey makes it a lot easier when I'm switching back and forth and don't have the mouse right next to my hand. I can just click con uh, Control R, and that'll run the test for me. And you see it ran everything locally because I had this useSauce set to uh, unchecked. Now if I were to check it and run the test, open that back up, um, it's going to start over again and it's going to give me this issue because of various things. So that is that. And I can, if I had multiple capabilities, I could check those on and off. And if I had multiple spec files, I could actually add and remove those, um, all the basic stuff there. And then if I don't want one, so say I want to get rid of that, I can just delete it and then that is gone. And those stay with you, so if I jump back over to the basic project, uh, it refreshes all that information, but if I come back to Sauce Labs, you see it's all there as before. So that is the majority of this desktop app and how it works for WebDriver IO. Um, I do have issues open if you want to open any issues. Looks like I have a pull request there. Oh yeah, that's for um, package monitoring. I need to get that updated. Um, if you look at my release backlog, you see I make releases, pretty small little releases here and there. Uh, and I try and talk about what is up with it. And if I do make a release, I've got it set up at least on Mac. Uh, I don't believe it's set up on Windows. But on Mac, if you have it, it'll actually, when you open up Chester Desktop, it'll let you know that there's a, a new update. And all you have to do is close down the program and start it back up. And it will run that new update for you. Uh, a quick note about Windows is I, this, I, de I'm developing this primarily on a Mac, so I just don't have a lot of time to test on Windows. So while I did have it working a few uh, versions back, I can't guarantee that it's still working just because of the way that bugs kind of pop up. I haven't tested on Windows in a while. So if you do try this out on Windows, I would really appreciate if you did. Um, leave an issue if you find it. Find that there is an issue. I did actually close one that somebody had opened already. Um, it took a little bit of work to, to get it fixed, but um, yeah, that's that. And if you are interested in running it locally, you can run this, uh, clone out the repo and run it locally. It runs off of Electron and Vue.js. So those are the technologies behind it using the Electron Vue uh, project. Really cool project. Um, contributions are always welcome. Any ideas you have, I would love to hear ideas about what you would like to see in this program. Uh, I'm kind of just using it um, in my day-to-day -day work. I don't have huge plans for it in the moment. I mean, I have some things that I would love to add to it, but um, nothing that I plan on adding. The one thing that I would like to do is change this from a single configuration overview to having profiles. So you like you have a, um, a debug profile that has all your settings for debugging tests and then like a maybe a Sauce Labs profile or whatever um, other third-party service you have that has all the things set up for you. Kind of like the way you have configuration files, 
but a little bit different in that manner. Um, and then I also mentioned that I would love to have that add a project be a little bit nicer to newcomers to it, but I just haven't had time for it. So anyway, thanks for watching and hope you have a great rest of your day.